Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're back. Mm -hmm. So, who remembers <sighs> last week and can recap? Uh, we I know. pulled ourselves up out of the um uh, out of the orc business. And uh I think I think we patched ourselves up. That was where we started last time, right? Was it like the tail end of that? Or am I misremembering? No, I believe we started just after that fight with the Tanaruk. Yep. Um and patched everyone up, um took a rest, and then was proceeded to be led by the orcs to generally where the witch's residence resides. Although they weren't too keen on getting very close. Um, we ventured forward. Um, after a while, we went into more kind of... Um, was it like kind of forested or like tree? There was some like foliage to it, I think. There were some trees. Yeah. Mostly and... it was a rocky um, path going up a... Not quite a cliff or a ridge, but something close to that. Right. And we, as we went on, proceeded to see uh, phantasms of our dead uh, loved ones. Um, luckily, Alsana's was the first, and she realized there is very little chance <laughs> that the person she saw was anywhere near here. Um, and then as it went on with uh, more and more, it just generally assumed illusion at play um and then a snowball was thrown and it was confirmed made it to the front door um looking around the side there was a pegasus bridled with some sort of uh not too nice magic saddle and itself looked pretty gaunt and withered and miserable so alsana gave it reassurance and celestial that we'll be back for um, walked up to the front door, it did the thing where it creepily opens for us. Um, and we met the hag, the night hag. She sat us down at a seat, gave us some tea, and was curious what we had come all the way to do. Uh, we started kind of testing the waters with we're looking for information on certain places in the uh, plains. Um, she was absolutely uh, reading our thoughts the whole time. Surface thoughts, but still. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, after a bit of conversation back and forth and kind of things we were willing to offer up, um, Alsana's al alchemy stuff, um, uh, Alaris's um, Orb was, was it orb of power? Beat of power? Yeah. Pearl power? Pearl of power. Uh, fell steel or, or something, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was put on the table and he firmly said no, and she also went, hey, and gave him some eyebrows, and he said, no, I'm married, and she s continued the eyebrows. <laughs> and he still vehemently said no, because why? Yep. He's still married? Yeah, and Aurora's a 10, so fuck off. <laughs> lady is like negative exponents yes um, so uh and after a bit of back and forth it she quickly came to realize that uh the thing she was kind of looking to have done in finding something that was stolen from her and killing a particularly nasty bard she didn't like she goes oh you all know him he's here what the fuck? You're gonna tell me, and you're gonna bring me his eyes? Yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> mood, but also, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and we go, tempting, but no. <laughs> um, and once the uh, conversation trailed off to another party member, Alsana took the initiative um, with a moonbeam, and then we proceeded to <laughs> melt a hag. We just fucking yeah. destroyed her. You ever, you ever, you know those like hydraulic press channel video videos, <laughs> where, it's, where it just like slowly goes down, but then it just kind of like poof, all out the side. It got squished by a moonbeam slowly, then exploded. Yeah, and yeah. 
Um, afterwards, some nasty two-headed hyena-looking things came out. Uh, what were they called? Something hounds? Death, Death hounds? dogs. Death dogs. Yeah. Um, Not really hyena-looking. They looked like mutated... Some form of dog... Doberman-y. Uh, Doberman, Mastiff, Lab, some kind of mutt mix of everything. Uh, two heads, very mean-looking. Yep. Very big. Also, I got something, but quickly cured it. Um, overall, we didn't really take much damage. Uh, and we had a hag corpse, and we had a hag abode full of loot. We checked through, took some stuff, did horrible on investigation checks. While well, Alsana was setting up a ritual, she's being directed by the voice in the book. <laughs> Netty. Really? Really feeling that right now, aren't you, Devin? Just, I mean, hindsight is a stab in the eyes. I can't wait till yeah, Alsana, we get to give Alsana shit for all the stuff she usually warns us about. And then she does this! <laughs> And, uh, as the ritual goes on, there's some red flags that, uh, all Sonic Kato looks past because, goddammit, she wants oh, to know fucker, what that this was, is. That was a whole ass parade. That wasn't a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some people just close their windows and go back to bed when parades go down the street. Yes, and instead of going back to bed, you raised a hag from a book. Look, it was like a really fucking... interesting Wikipedia article. Look, that's some, like, that's some Harry Potter shit, man. Come on. Alsana accidentally found the dark web. She, yeah. she, she's looking and she's like, okay, enough with this fucking Santa Claus parade. Let me get back to my anarchist cookbook. I have napalm to make. And then you realize you were using a flame stove as opposed to a convection oven, which means you're fucked. You were doing a blood rich. Okay. Um, so the corpse was then basically transmogrified and the soul from within the book transferred over and the body of the previous hag took shape to a new hag a tall hag with uh much sturdier um physio physiology than the last you need nail flippers bro <gasps> yep and yes and some from what i remember shiny looking nails and teeth She's got a, re a really bad acrylics job. I'm sorry. Kill one, get one free. <laughs> awesome. It's a Coco. <laughs> yep. I mean, I mean, we, we if we wanted to have a if we wanted to make a deal with the hag, we're kind of having our cake and eating it too. We got the experience for killing a hag. We got all the loot in the hag's mansion, and now we still have a hag to make a deal with. So really, I mean, I did the party a favor. I see this as an absolute. I see this as an absolute. Win. Uh, <laughs> uh, I read that as like a Ryan Long comedy bit, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so <laughs> that was where we left off. So that's progress I made. Alright. So, as the hag, Granny Nettle, stands there in front of you, holding up the book that once imprisoned her, and showing you, especially Alsana, various lines reappeared on the pages in both of your handwriting. Signed off at the end by Alsana with a little black heart. And she grins Alsana. with shiny black teeth and just sort of snaps the book shut and tucks it into this ragged, filthy cloak that uh, covers her hunched back and trails and tatters on the floor. With that, she looks around the tower and... Kind of gives a disdainful sniff. Alsana? Uh, what, what is all of this? She reaches over to the bright purple curtains beside her, fingers the material, and then grabs the rod and wrenches it out of the stone. Pebbles clatter to the ground, dust kind of in the air. Alsana kind of like shoots a glance over to the party, like, and, and like a hand up, like, hold a second. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Lars is giving a what the fuck junk. kind of. What did she do to this place? I 
have never in all my years such disrespect. And you kind of hear her muttering to herself if she goes into, like, the next room. You hear more clattering about and uh, kind of the noise of semi-verbalized complaints. Also, I kind of, like, leans in just... Am I to take it this was yours at once? Oh, something of a summer cottage, you could call it. But, well, this is just hideous. And she's pulling up the hyena uh, rug on the ground and starts to stump out of the room, still trailing the rod and the dividing curtains in one hand and the rug in the other. Kind of beg pardon, dear, and pushes her way around and just kind of unceremoniously tosses them out the front door. So what a mess. I am going to have to spend so much time cleaning. She starts picking her way through the rubble. So you're not a what fan on of purple? Earth? What on earth was she thinking? Oh, of course not. Entirely too bright. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, this is utterly tasteless. And she gets in there and starts pulling the uh, mounted hyena head off the wall. You can hear the <laughs> of various screws screaming in the stonework. Are you vegetarian too, dear? Hmm? Oh no, of course not. Don't you know roughage is so bad for the bowels? That's fair. Not a fan of dogs then, or? Kane just leans into Alsana's ear like, "Hey, Alsana." What the fuck? She tosses the hyena head out the door as well. You hear it clattering there's, on the rocks. There's a whisper back. Take this slowly. What I can agree. Do? I can agree. It was sort of gaudy. I. The heads are odd. So I have to ask. And she kind of like starts ignoring Kane. <laughs> Natola is the proper term. Granny Natola, if you please. I didn't work my way up through hag hierarchy just to be called by the one name. Is that a formal title then? Well, only the oldest hags get to be called Granny. Hmm. Then you've got the aunties and then you've got the little upstarts like the complete tart tricked me into that book and took over my place. Mm. Also, just like slowly nods. And just... And... How much of any of what was said before is true? You see her walk over and she just completely bodily picks up the entire wooden bookshelf. Dust just rains down onto the floor and she starts dragging it clunk, clatter, thump across the stones back towards the door. Oh, well, some things. Nettie is something of a nickname, I suppose, if I really must go by it. Um, I wasn't lying about needing the luck. Or about not knowing how long I'd been in that dratted book, or where I was. Couldn't really see or hear anything outside of it either. Oh, thank you for the company, by the way, my dear. I do appreciate it. I believe I owe you a story or two. As agreement. She nods. How about that? Were you... I suppose you weren't present for the conversation had with the previous owner of your flesh? Hmm. No, I'm afraid I wasn't. Interesting one, dear. And she kind of takes the bookcase outside the door and tips it over the, um, the raised platform that the stairs lead up to and you hear it just crash and shatter on the ground below. She stands back and dusts her hands off. Did you get what you wanted? <laughs> Never go to a hag unless you want something, after all. Part of the reason we came here, in all honesty, was my expectation that I was freeing a unfortunate uh, 
young woman from a book. Hmm. She peers at you. Well, very kind. And she turns away and starts uh, going to pick up some more of the fur rugs in the room. The other bit that we were testing if we could get information out of before this this is a location in these planes. You say you're one of the oldest hags. She tosses the furs out. They're certainly the oldest in these parts. So you're aware of the um, floor of the land, let's say? <laughs> A fair bit. What Would if that the... be one of the stories you'd like? She nods. I've got a few more besides. The... Very entertaining. What of the times when this place was not so desolate? Hmm. Large capital city, once upon a time? Ah, no. I've heard stories. Um, I believe my own progenitor, if you would like to call her that, knew of that place and time. Did you stick her end. in a book? Oh, of course not. No, she was, uh, unfortunately got on the wrong side of a, a village that had grown into rather more of a town, didn't move out soon enough, pitchforks, torches, adventurers, you know, the whole drill. She kind of waves her hand. Bit of a sticky end. I'd prefer to avoid the same. She nods. She goes over and picks up a huge boulder from the broken earth area. Uh, probably once part of the flooring. Uh, she just heaves it up, looks at the ground underneath it, kind of tisks. It's going to take forever to replace Oh, well, maybe I'll just burrow a little bit. And she starts hauling the boulder towards the door. Nothing wrong with a little expansion. It's been so long since I've had a basement. Besides, it'll be a nice little place untouched by that little harpy. You're not by chance referring to an actual harpy, are you? Oh, of course not. Okay, good. I've heard bad things about those. Uh, and she's gonna look. So, outside of um, interior decorating and renovations. She tosses the boulder out. Yes, yes, unfortunately, that's going to take some time, though she swings around and kind of eyes Kane, and then actually Calder as well. You two look stout and strong. Care to lend an old woman a hand? Sure, Miss Gra Granny Nettle. Call is just like. Call has been the most confused look on her face for like five minutes straight. <laughs> oh, very polite. I will. I will, of course, compensate in kind. I don't like to be in any sort of debt, but. Uh, well, fair price is fair price. Maybe I'll just... Any stories I'll tell to the group rather than to only Alsana? Alright, these renovations you're talking about seems a bit vast. Oh, this works out. Yep, I can just sigh and walk over to uh, Colin and start pushing the rock with her. Yeah. And... Uh... Look as well, but outside of those um, uh, priorities, what do you intend to do? Hmm. Rebuild, expand as you say, renovate, reconnect all of my former connections and influences, no doubt long gone, three and a half centuries in a book. There's so much groundwork to redo have to completely rebuild my customer base. Very inconsiderate. 
She probably stole them, too, come to think of it. I mean, many would not know the difference between a hag and a tower, and a different hag in the same. Hmm. Well, many would have to be blind. Some of them change their forms anyways, and remain the same, do they not? True enough, but that would be a significant downgrade. What kind of imbecile would think I would revert to the form of a green hag of all things? Oh, she had gone past that. Ah, oh, had she? Night hag. Hmm. Can't say I'm fond. Does Alsana know the name of this one? Hmm, you can go ahead and roll a nature check. Just off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure this one is known as an anise hag. A little bit more known for mountainous terrain, but... Something that almost makes more sense now, given the place that this tower is at. Hmm. This place is perhaps as mountainous as you get on the plains, which is to say not very much, but at least there's a little bit of change in elevation. Hmm. There are some rocks. It's uh, probably about as good as it's going to get around here. And you're Annis, right? Well, if you want to be all uh, technical. I mean, we are walking into a cavern of one. I would be remiss to not have done some research. Though not enough to catch on to your little ruse, I suppose. I suppose not. And after finding contacts and things of the like, Is your operations the same as many others? She heaves up another rock and carries it to the door. Very likely. It's, uh, it's rather what we do. Somebody has a problem! She heaves the rock out the door, and it actually whirs a good distance. And you hear it crash through one of the trees. And uh, we either provide the tools to take care of it, or a helping hand, as the case may be. Have any of you seen a butter churn around here? Not that I know of. Oh, she'd best not have gotten rid of it. That one was my favorite. <laughs> Out of character, that's fucking amazing. That's, that's really fucking... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking 12 foot tall old lady who can bench a plane. It's like, where's my butter churner? <laughs> she could churn her butter once and just have perfectly fine butter. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Probably yeah, a she very could tenderize hot... meat with a solid flick. Yeah, just uh. If she just like cuts her nails a little bit uneven, that's just a fucking meat tenderizer, Rose. Yeah, man. She's just kind of slowly nodding. And ever thought of a um, I guess a change in profession? Oh, of course not. Why not? goes back and picks up another boulder. Ah! Well, they say when you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And she struggles back to the door with it. Uh, the boulder is probably like the size of Calda, if not a little bigger. Cool. <laughs> and, well, I suppose sticking with what you know, You've probably done much the same for many of you, for much of your long existence, yes? She whoop, and the boulder goes flying through the air. <sighs> well, again, you do what you love. And she turns and looks kind of uh, more peers over at you, Elsana. Do you do what you love? Hmm? Do you enjoy your line of work, whatever that may be? She thinks for a sec. I would think so. And if I were to ask you if you would 
consider doing something else with all your life. Well, as of right now, my profession is time-based, so I won't be doing it forever. Hmm. Well then, if you could do whatever you wanted forever, and if you were doing it, and if somebody came up and asked, well, why don't you do something different? Would you do something different? And kept pressing the issue, wouldn't you not be just a little bit, uh... Hmm. A little unhappy. She tilts her head. I suppose I don't have the um, point of reference of living many years, at least not yet. Hmm. I don't think change of pace would be in order for anyone. <laughs> not yet. Well, there's the spirit. Tell you what, child, you get to something of my age and... Uh... Well, we'll see. Could be you find what you were always meant to do and settled into it. Could be perfectly happy after 300, 500, something more years. Am I to take that as your number? Of course not. Then you'll excuse my impoliteness if I do ask. And you would be asking what? How old are you? Roughly. Hmm. Well, roughly. That's unimportant. She kind of gives this, like, oh, okay, expression. Just... Old beyond any potential you may have. Well, unless you get into some very interesting magics indeed. <laughs> she gives a smile. Oh, well, I'm glad you have faith in me. Hmm. If you do, come by for tea someday. Well, I say tea. Really, it's whatever I happen to pull out of a cupboard or bottled or um, traded. Nod. Do they still make dandelion wine around here? Do they? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> also, uh, gives a shrug. It's like, I unfortunately not, uh, not quite aware. <laughs> I don't think they do in Veravel. Kane, you don't know either. <laughs> so, so then about those stories ah uh, yes uh, she kind of starts uh, kind of brushing kicking with her feet um, as if they were just pebbles uh, some larger sized rocks that clatter across the floor towards the door I can think of one or two, at least, for the time being. Uh, one's a little shorter, one's a little longer. I don't know if either is to your interest. Would you have to give me the notes on the back of the book, then? Hmm. One is called The Nail. It's a personal favorite of mine. about a little girl who had a problem and needed some help. And of course she got it. And learned to help herself in the meantime. Very uplifting, I'm told. The other is called The Pride and the Fall. A little more uh, gloomy by humanoid sentiments, I understand. But it's an old one. I was told by my own forebear. Might be to your interest. And 
Well, you are now in possession of the book, but I believe as written it was a few stories. We never said a number. But we didn't say a single one. No, we said stories. I could tell both. I... Personally, I would enjoy that. I'm not sure. And she glances over. The others, though, if you'd like to take a bit of a leave. Or if you'd like to stay, that's up to you. I think staying's probably a better idea. Apparently, since we were offered these stories as well for our help. Um, would you excuse me for... Just a moment. There's a... Something I was wanting to take care of, I only found about when I first got here. I'll be back mm. in just a minute. Won't be far. Very but well. Oh, uh, we've still got some more stones to finish moving. What a mess. What on earth did she do? And also, I kind of like mouth the words, thank you, sorry, to Kalta and the rest of them. Kalta gives just like the thumbs up behind your back and Osana walks out. Yep. <laughs> Sana is real quick. Heading over to that Pegasus. Mm -hmm. Once again, it barely lifts its head looking at you, but it does seem to actually like follow you slightly with one ear. A little slow, a little bit uh, lagging behind, but tracking your movements with some interest. Now that you're up close, uh, a little closer, you can see from the height of the cage, uh, the gibbet-like cage on the outside of the tower, hanging over the paddock, um, that even if the Pegasus reached up uh, to the full extent of its neck and head, uh, it would barely be able to catch the bits of hay poking out the very bottom. And though the hay on the top of the heap inside the cage looks relatively fresh. The stuff at the bottom looks like it's moldering and kind of greenish and discolored. Poor, poor thing. And she switches to Celestial. I'm here to help, alright? You see just a little bit more attention. Um, is the cage openable? Um, it is pretty much a, uh, there is no actual overarching cage. It right. seems to just be a pen. Uh, a lot of thorny vines are woven through it, but with a little bit of care, you're able to find the latch on the gate and open it up. She puts a hand out. There is a very thin, almost wheeze from the Pegasus. It Poor doesn't move. Thing. She is going to first. Uh, actually, um, she's just going to give it a healing word. All right. You see some of the open wounds seal cl uh, closed. Some of the older but still painful looking scratches and bruises. It still looks dingy. It still looks unwell. Mostly starved and uh, the bridle and the saddle still kind of dig into its hide. With various protrusions and more of those thorny uh, outcroppings. She kind of looks at it. The seat part of the saddle is clear of the thorns. It's mostly down the straps and on the part of the bridle that comes in contact. Yeah. She's going to. I'm going to be careful. Just bear with me a second. She's going to kind of like run her hand where the saddle is and. See if it's willing to be undone. Carefully. Okay. There is... There are a lot of sharp bits on this. Even with care, your fingers get pricked multiple times. Um, go ahead and roll... 
Let's see. Roll an investigation check. Make sure you don't flick your glasses on. Yep. You have time to give yourself a guidance as well, since you usually do that. This is something you're doing intentionally. There it is. 24 plus... 27. 27. You're able to find, hidden among the thorns, a, um, a small catch. It's not so much a physical buckle. Uh, it looks like it's inscribed with a few jagged-looking marks um, that seem to be somewhat magical in nature. I don't believe you know the language they're in. She knows common, elvish, druidic, abyssal, and celestial. Actually, you do. Mm -hmm. They are written in abyssal. And uh, you're able to... It, it's essentially... Um, uh, it doesn't say so much, so much as it's... Uh, yep. Bits of abyssal treated as runes, as magical anchors. Uh, but you are able to discern their meaning and their working. And with that investigation and your knowledge of that language, you're able to pretty much figure out what the instructions would be, and uh, you're essentially able to guess at and command in Abyssal the saddle to unlatch. And when you command it to release, there's a faint snap, a little pop of energy. And the whole thing starts to list slightly on the Pegasus's back. Uh, some of the thorns uh, dig in a little bit and start She's to doing drag with the really She's really going to like hurt herself with her hands to take it yep. off of the Pegasus. Yep. And you uh, manage to steady it, pull the straps away very carefully, and uh, pull it off. You find a similar catch on the bridle, similar release command, and you're able to work it away from the injured and neglected form. At this point, however, the Pegasus is actually kind of halfway lifted his head and is blinking and looking at you as if he has never seen anything before. It's and okay. you're the most wondrous thing that's come across him. She's just kind of, like, patting nicely. It's okay, dear. There are little shivers and shudders every time you touch, but he's holding still for it. And the more that you stroke very gently around wounds, avoiding sore spots, the more he kind of seems to lean towards you. Um, I should get checked. Does this thing have, uh, horseshoes? I would say he does. Um, they look kind of heavy and they seem to be made of iron. Um, not bad for horseshoes, but these seem a little bit roughly made. Do they look neglected? Somewhat. Not potentially able to walk? He's standing, and... Uh, if you shuffle back and try to coax him onward, he does take a couple of faltering steps towards you. He doesn't seem unable to move, um, but he does seem like he's not going to be doing any major getaways very quickly anytime soon. Yep, just kind of gives him another pat. Um, she's going to um, real quick float up and grab some of that uh, wheat more nicer mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Bring it down to him. He seems hesitant at first, but soon he starts to uh, kind of nibble at the edges of it, and soon is um, dragging it a little bit closer and one mouthful at a time, chomping down. When you look around the paddock, you may notice that uh, there, for the most part, it's just uh, beaten down earth inside of the fenced-in area, but there are what seem to be kind of the cropped-off remains of uh, the really tough grass that grows around here, a few weeds here and there. Stuff that he's probably been somewhat sustaining on for a little while.
His mane and tail are full of burrs, matted, tangled, and knotted. Just as he's, he's going to need a lot of care. Yeah. Just, just as he's eating, she'll just kind of give a light hug around the neck. Just in celestial. I'm going to be okay. I love you. Uh, you feel more than hear the slight rumble um, of a response in the neck. He continues to busily eat. She'll just quickly a bit of her water skin into her hands and give some of that as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, you get the uh, you get the horsey lips kind of doing the yep. <laughs> <laughs> out of the palm of your hand. After a bit more eating, he seems to have regained some strength, at least, and starts to uh, move towards the gate, looking over and down at the pool of water nearby. You can kind of see the uh, the lips moving in that motion. Yep. Um, she will lead the horse to water. <laughs> and he does drink. And she'll just... Uh, and Celeste, she'll just... Be right back. Stay there. I promise. Mm-hmm. I promise I'll be back. All right. Very gently knocks his head into your chest. Oh, oh, oh. He gives a pat and heads back in. Okay. <laughs> How's the progress in the interior renovation? Mostly cleared of the debris this and. Is the one, two, three, heft. Conrad, One, two, three, heft. Conrad. background there, yes. Conrad. I know, it's a thing about it. The dose. You can mute. Okay. He did. That's what he's been doing. Yep. Um, <laughs> it looks it's like, oh, you took out a wall, too. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one hurt. There was nothing more to be done for it besides rather opens up the place. Yeah, Alaris has, Alaris has like a Alaris transformed his thing into like a war pick. It's just like picking away at stuff. Well, <laughs> has like, been like Bram. trying to ask, um, ask Nettle like what her fashion choices are if she doesn't like all the furs and like the just trying to make that little bit of conversation. Just like I don't know what to talk about, so I'm just gonna talk. Bare stone is always what you want to go with. None of this stupid textiles covering things up. No appreciation for natural rock. Well, don't your feet get cold, though? Don't you have, like, slippers or something, just in case? Or do you cold. like the cold? Of course I don't get cold. Who gets cold? Sometimes if it's, like, snowing, like, you're on a high hill, there's some wind. Of course you not. Get cold? No, that's just part of nature. Alrighty. What about, like, Okay, I see how it is like when it gets really hot too. Do you feel that heat? Or do you just brush it off like the cold? Well, it doesn't really get hot. Not if you choose the place you're living correctly. That's very true, that's that's very true, but not even the feeling of it. You should like the tap of cold, I suppose, and cold like sort of knocks like the toe of her boot on the ground. It's a nice sound. Exactly. You get much better echoes when it's all bare and uncovered. Oh, like calling into an empty room that's just nothing, and then it just like goes back at you. Oh, that's that's great. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go pick up this rock now. <laughs> I'll walks in and gives this like look to call to like thank you. <laughs> I'm just like just shrugging. Yep, she doesn't goes, like, know what's going on. What? Uh, Caldo, what was that? <laughs> uh. Back in, and just uh, for one said to have been forged from metal and stone. I don't think uh, uh, Granny Nettle would be one for temperatures. Yeah, it really doesn't seem like it. Doesn't even have a pair of slippers. It's they're comfortable. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Um, it's not too much trouble. Could we start with the stories? Oh, very well. This is about as good as it's going to get for right now. I do have to go through all the chunk she seems to have accumulated back there and see if perhaps my churn is there. 
I do hope she didn't scrap it. There's a quick, like, tap on uh, Kane's shoulder. And just, like, let's go over. You didn't have that shuffle churn in the bag, did you? You might still be muted. He is still muted. Sorry, I missed the question. She just whispers over to Kane, like, You didn't happen to put a butter churn in the bag, did you? No, but I can pull one out. I, mm, uh, you, you know what? Go ahead. <laughs> wow, that's some background noise. Yep. <laughs> He's gonna roll thick, pull a butter turn into the bag. Question: Did you already use the bag today? I don't think so. No, I don't think right. so. Today covered the um. You started the day by meeting the, the clipboard. That yeah, is the clipboard. Clipboard. <laughs> clipboard. Clipboard, fuck you. I had a feeling you'd done something. So yep. unfortunately, that feature is not going to work right now. Okay, hold on. What, what do I have that's adjacent to a clipboard? I turned to, I kind of feel like, how, what are the necessary parts of a butter churn? <laughs> she looks over, forget it. Um, I'm just saying, like, I have No, just it's okay. uh, the helmet of a giant and a thing we can use to churn stuff inside of it. I need a lid to put on top of it. That's not how it works. They're carefully okay. crafted. Are they? They're at least they have some semblance rather than junk. Okay, but like, how how high quality does this butter have to be? So just like, don't just leave it for now. Can shake, you can make um, yeah, and she'll kind of like bring the group to wherever uh, Nettie is going. She's actually kind of sitting herself down on the edge of the stairs, a little ways up, uh, both of her long, skinny legs dangling down the inner wall. Well, find yourself seats, I suppose. Uh, so I'll pick up one of the knocked over ones from the table. Are they seats gonna move too? I didn't sit down the last time. Not that I know of. If there's any tricks that the last one rigged up, well, she shrugs. Call this one to keep standing. Very well, comfortable. Which tail would you like first? The somewhat longer or the somewhat shorter? Let's start with the long. It's more. From my understanding, it's a bit more uh, relevant to us. So my interest still is hold, held on the other. Uh, the long one, the nail. My oh. personal favorite. Oh, was the nail the long one? I thought it was the short one, out of character. Nope. The nail is the long one, which is why I said it. Uh, the short one is the pride and the fall. Okay. Um, pride and the fall, then. Sorry. All right. Hmm. It is... Uh... Quick question, is the butter made from Pegasus milk? Uh, I mean, I don't use the butter churn to make butter, of course. What do you use it for? Well, to fly! Uh, okay. Oh, it's a... Is it like a broom for some hags or witches sometimes? Oh, well, I suppose you could make a broom, but it's all rather, well, done, isn't it? Asana looks. <laughs> Asana like doesn't look at Netty, but then very pointedly looks over at Calda. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just a plain broom. Calda looks over, brushing almost. The wings look fine. It's fine. I yeah, a little bit cliche, you know, the base broom. You gotta decorate it a little bit or change it up. That's perfectly fine and normal. <laughs> <laughs> and he's no, gonna, and he, and I also is gonna remember, shoot I had a, the look. I had a rather nice mortar and pestle, which worked just about as well. The butter churn just happened to be a little more aerodynamic. You had a flying mortar and pestle? Oh yes, very comfortable. Oh. Did you sit in the bowl and like it's like a boat? It was a, yes, it was a little bit slower going in the air, but I enjoyed it for journeys where I could take my time. If I had to be somewhere in a hurry, though, the churn was the way to go. I feel mm. like we've gotten a bit off track. 
Ah, yes. So you could you could fashion a flying item out of the Alaris, I swear. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just spitballing here. Well, in theory, I've heard of people who've done it with carpets of all things. Seems highly okay. unreliable to me. You'd think they'd unravel in midair. Mm. I was thinking maybe a chair. Nice and comfortable. I've heard of some who've done that as well. I'll have to try it someday, perhaps. Um, sure, but... the table. Hmm. I think the table might be going a bit far. Hmm. So the uh... <laughs> first pun's happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyhow, the short story. The pride and the fall. Now, as I said, this one was told to me by my own predecessor a very long time ago, and it was set an even longer time before I came into existence. It's passed through many minds, many mouths in the meantime. And perhaps some of the details have been lost, and perhaps others have been changed or added in this point, who could say? But once, long ago, there was a dark and rotten kingdom, a testament to the hearts of its rulers. Of these, three were the highest. The king, who ruled the people, the general, who commanded the armies, and the priest, who governed the spirits. It was long before then appointed that these three would stand as equals, each one balancing the other two, so that none could grow beyond the others in power, and all needs would be kept. But each of these three desired ultimate rule, and there was no end to their machinations and plots. As they bickered amongst themselves, their rotting kingdom slowly fell apart, succumbing to the disease planted there long before. Finally, it happened that the collapse was all but complete. Forces rose from without and within to topple these rulers. They and their last troops, still bound to them by greed and pride, retreated deep within the castle, further and further to its innermost sanctum, where they made their last stand. And there at the end, each attempted one final betrayal of the others. Take these two idiots, bargained the king, and my people, who were all stupid enough to be misled by them. Let me go free and alive, and you shall have half the gold of my treasury, and all these great lands beside, while I appoint a new kingdom elsewhere. These men are weak, bargained the general. They have no true purpose, and have always held me back. Let me go free and alive and you shall have half my remaining army, and I will not ride in contest with you, but it shall instead conquer elsewhere. These two are evil and full of deceit, bargained the priest, such that I have so long feared for my life while ruling alongside them, and could never act against them for the good of all. Let me go free and alive, and you will have my blessings and guidance in higher matters, as well as half my acolytes in your care, as I ensure no such wickedness could rise to power again. But the leader of the rebels took none of them at their word. You are all stupid and weak and equally wicked as the other. Even now, at the end, you would sacrifice each other as well as those who look to you to save your own lives and what scraps of power you could. You will die for all you have done and the rebels killed them, and left their bones in a heap. But some thought this end was too quick and easy, and wished for these rulers to suffer further. So they went to a powerful weaver of magic for help, and they bought a curse against these men, binding their spirits forever to that place and to one another. Each spirit was given a secret key, and each key would fit the lock that bound them, but only the last to use their key would willing, would be freed and allowed to rest, while the other two would suffer forever. 
And so, since none would willingly sacrifice himself for another, and none could compel the others to do so, it followed that none would ever find any form of peace, as they remained trapped in the decayed remains of the kingdom they once ruled, with only each other for company. Or so the story was told to me. It was just like a slow nod. Well, call me a bit of a uh, dramatic, but I have a feeling if we seek what we want, we might run into these three. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a trick? Would you free them? Would that mean I lay, lay in their stead? Not the one I've ever heard. It's just a curiosity. Hmm. I wonder if any would. The story does paint a rather bleak picture. But they've had much time to wallow in their prison with that little to have. do. Perhaps it might have taught a lesson. <laughs> if any have learned such a lesson, then I'm sure that one has already been freed. If you were to drive the lesson home, however, I wonder which one you would choose. Only one can go free. I don't think so. I think An that's what they're outlook. told. I think that's what's brought up. And maybe perhaps that is a answer, but you have to wonder what would happen if all three agreed. That is how it is answered. Each one needs to put the key in the lock. However, once that is done, the third and final one is allowed freedom. But what Two if all three to... were okay without being the last? If they somehow could do so simultaneously. An interesting prospect. Not one that I've ever heard asked in such a story. More often I've heard asked, especially when it's told to a group of people, especially a small group. If you were all in such a predicament, only one could be free, the others had to sacrifice. Could you agree who should go and who would stay? over. Well, some more than others, I would like to be not subject to eternity with. Such was the case for these three men from the story that I've been heard, told. All the tales I've heard. They hated each other. Well, I guess the best insight we, we've got on this fight. Yeah, right. Well. Something to keep in mind, and perhaps the best insight we could gain is asking the three men themselves. I hope to. Oh, if you should be so lucky, I'd like to hear the result. Huh, seems I'm a bit of a good luck charm already. You've seen the results? <laughs> Indeed. I'll be paying some attention, should you return. Nuts. Now, for the other story... To repay you for the kindness of releasing me from the book. Would you like to hear the story of the nail? Hmm. Might I ask first where you learned this one? 
I've just realized I mistitled it. Oh. This was a DM error. Um, it should be called the spindle because I changed a major detail when I was halfway through writing it, and then I forgot to go back to the title. She's old. Her memory's not the best. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. She kind of sits there and goes, oh, no, wait, not the nail. That one's terrible. What was I thinking? No, the spindle. Uh, it's something of a tale. One of those that I told myself many times over while I was still trapped in there. I think I've refined it fairly well. It's not one that I was told. It's one that I gathered scraps of other stories and wove them together into a new one. Interesting. So in a way, you'll be the first to actually hear it. Oh, I seem to be first for a lot of things recently with you, so by all means. Once upon a time, there was a little girl in a little village, and she was unloved by anyone. Her mother hated her, calling her lazy and setting impossible tasks so that she could berate the child when they were unfinished, punishing her by piling more tasks on. Her father was absent, more interested in his own concerns than in those of his family. The other children were cruel to her as well, for she was small and weak, and they knew that they had that she had no one to run to when they pushed her down in the mud and called her names. Thus she became known as Little Toad, and she lived a miserable life for nine long years, until a kindly old woman who lived alone at the end of the village finally took pity on the poor creature. Whenever she had a chance, Little Toad would escape her tormentors and run to the old granny, where she would sit by the fire and learn to spin thread, and she listened to the old woman's stories. Slowly, her work at or her own home improved, because for the first time, someone was showing her how to do it properly, rather than handing her tools she did not understand and telling her to get to work. This did not get, go unnoticed by the girl's mother, though rather than joy, the woman felt rage. Where did you learn this? She would demand to know, until Little Toad finally admitted, the old granny taught me. The mother would huff and say, the thread is lumpy and uneven, and the granny's knowledge is good for nothing just as you are, and send Little Toad to bed without supper and the promise of more difficult chores as well as her normal ones in the morning. Thus it was a week before Little Toad could escape to see the village granny again, and when she did, the old woman asked where she had been. Upon hearing the girl's tearful tale, the granny nodded and said, I have just the thing for you. She gave the little girl an old spindle, worn and cracked and blackened as if it had fallen in a fire long ago, and said, This spindle is magic and will cure all your ills. Whatever you attach to it, if you drop it and tell it, spin, spindle, spin, it will spin it into the finest thread, and it will not stop until all is spent from the heap you started with. Set it to work in a quiet corner, and none will see it, and you will be free to do other tasks set without worry, and even to come to me and hear my stories again. The girl took it, and tested it on a small basket of wool the granny provided, and sure enough, no sooner had she set wool to spindle and commanded it to work, it did so, and the girl spent the rest of her visit merrily chatting and learning to bake bread while the spindle whirled beside her. For a time, though her life was not yet well, it at least went no worse, and Little Toad had some freedom from the spindle, which she soon discovered could spin not only wool and flax, but also straw, leaves, grass, and even sticks of wood into soft, strong thread. And soon she was trading this in secret to merchants, and earning a little coin. This she hardly knew what to do with, save that whatever was done she should not let her mother know of it. So she hid it away in a secret place beside the hearth in her home. This, however, was her undoing. As her mother noticed the loose stone one day, and found the stash, and it went not at all well for little Toad. Are you a thief now? her mother accused the child. A common burglar or pickpocket? Have you been stealing this from merchants, or stealing it from my own home, which I have so kindly provided you? Such a thankless child. Items to sell to them. Where? 
Where did this come from? And why would you hide it unless it were wrongfully gained? You selfish wretch. Many more things were said and done until at the end of it, little Toad was shut up in the cellar for a week again before she was allowed to emerge, hungry and cold, to find her money spent on her mother's own wants. And the nice breads and meats already eaten by her and her husband, little Toad's own father, though he did not know or question how his wife had gotten them. You are a wicked child, the mother said when she let little Cho Toad out of the hole. But I will give you this one chance to redeem yourself, for it so hurts my heart and soul to think my own daughter could be a thief. Find yourself a true trade, and any wages from it you will turn over to me, until the room and board I have provided you all these years is repaid in full. Then you will be free of your own wrongdoing. Little Toad went in silent tears to her granny that day, and was gathered into the old woman's arms and asked to tell her tale. She cried at the end, for she knew even with her tender years that her mother would never call any debt paid, and sooner or later she would find Little Toad's secret spindle, however well hidden. And when that was done, she would take that too. There is one thing that could be done, the granny said, stroking Little Toad's head. To shame your mother, and make it so she could not show her face, nor could she blame you for it, and which could get you enough coin to be free of her besides. The spindle's thread is always fine, but it can be made better with better things set into it. Some of the finest thread comes from hair. Think on it. Would not that woman who has scratched and spit on you for all your life deserve baldness at the very least? Little Toad could not disagree, and soon her heart was set and a plan was made. That night she waited until her mother was asleep, and set the end of her hair against the spindle, which she twisted and whispered, spin, spindle, spin, and it soon set to work. For hours it whirled in the dark, and little Toad, though she had planned to take it as soon as it was done and flee to the grannies, fell asleep listening to its song. When she woke in the morning, the spindle was full of silky thread, but her mother was nowhere to be found. That's fine, said the granny when she ran to her with the thread, asking what could have happened. No doubt she fled the village forever when she discovered what had happened. Now sell the thread, keep the coin, and remember, it is always possible to spin your troubles away. So little Toad grew up in great success and wealth, and if her mother, and eventually her father, and many of the cruelest of the village children, left in the night and were never seen again, well, it really was just what they deserved, was it not? With that, she settles back and looks at you expectantly, hmm. gauging your reactions. Osana has a bit of a grin on her face. And that was all your own. Well, more or less. I've heard other tales. I just took some elements here, a dash of something there, and put it back together. Hmm. Anything from your life personally well, I've made my own deals with poor little ones from terrible situations but no the thread not quite my style but I did think it fitting for this particular one here's a could you give a quick insight check go ahead She's being a little vague, but given her uh, disdain towards the textile arts, mm -hmm. probably thread isn't her style, but she might have done some similar little things as far as end results go. Hmm. Well, I quite enjoyed it. Well, I will say I saw the... Um, the eventuality of what that spindle could do rather early. But then again, given who's telling me it, perhaps I have some uh, unfair insight. Perhaps. And the rest of you? She looks around at the rest of the party. Well, it's like just like staring down, just like, did the entire mother turn to yard? I suppose so. I think that's very much the implication, yes. 
Yes. Oh, that makes so much more sense. Yes. There's a little chuckle from the hag, and she kind of taps the side of her nose and winks at you. That mother deserved it. Don't mm. be a bitch to your kids. Hmm. That is fair. I'm glad to hear you agree. Yeah. I never locked my kids in a closet. I've never locked my kids anywhere. Oh, you have children. How delightful. There's a light, yeah. like tap on the um, foot from Alsana to Calda. Mm -hmm. Are they good little children? They're uh, rather grown. Ah. Very grown, yeah. Hmm. A shame they're so sweet when they're small. Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> For first, I was so bewildered in the fact of yarn that I forgot hags ate children for a second there. Uh, and the, and she just kind of like lightly. Also, I was trying to keep it together. Um, <laughs> just yes. Um, well, I think both of those gave uh, a good amount of insight. I suppose that was some very nice stories. If I Thank could, you, I'd appreciate that. If I could have a, a if I could request a small story, maybe one not so rehearsed. More so a curiosity of mine. Perhaps. What would that be? Even the oldest things come from somewhere. Even the strongest and most powerful things, magically or physically, are not always as they are. Where did Granny Net Nettle come from? How did you find yourself in this world? Well, that is a story. I'll be reaching far back in my memory for that. My predecessor. You might call her my mother, though the relationship is almost as much a mentorship as anything else. I'm told there came a time she wanted, or thought it best at least, to... Uh, Have a child, in a certain manner of terms. Of course, hags are born more from magic than uh, the normal humanoid interactions, which I'm told of. It seems a very unpleasant business. And so, I understand I was not here for much of this, but deals were struck, and... A couple went home with a little baby wrapped in a blanket to raise until she came of age. I barely remember them, to be honest. I was always a little bit more interested in my own pursuits. But, uh, I lived a... Hmm. I'm not sure it was normal. I lived a life. Outwardly, not much different from that of other humanoid children in the area. I always knew I was different. I knew things that they didn't, understood things in different ways. Saw the world in a different light. Until finally I turned 13. And all of that strange, vague understanding suddenly clicked into focus. It all made sense. I knew what I was and what I was meant to be. 
And so I shed that life, that skin. I became what I was born to be. The couple who acted as my mother and father, I left them a little something, a little blessing. I owed them, after all, for watching after me while I couldn't yet myself. And I do hate owing somebody. I understand that they lived rather well. And for a fairly full life by uh, humanoid standards. I didn't look, him, look in on them very often. But from what I knew, it seemed that way. And I walked off into the mountains. And there I was taken in by my... Uh, it seems so inaccurate to call her a birth mother. My progenitor. She taught me all I needed to know. Perhaps a little bit less than what she knew. But I picked up a trick or two here and there. And in time, when I felt I knew enough, I went off. I established my own place. Not here. I've moved around a fair bit in the intervening years. But I was on my way and made a good business of it. Of course, you know, my progenitor became a little bit careless and a little bit uh, small-minded in her dealings and... Soon enough, the mob happened. Her own fault, really. There are some mistakes you simply don't make. The gingerbread house was a tad of a ill-thought touch. It's like a... Excuse me. <laughs> yes, I rather thought the same. No. You stick with dirty stone. Gingerbread's too easy to break through. Qu quick insight check. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, if she's making it up, she's doing so with a straight face. <sighs> You're not spinning a tale. An untrue one, are you? Well, you asked me to spin a tale. As for whether it's true or not, does it rarely matter? I suppose interest is held all the same. Hmm. As long as it captures the spirit of the thing. So, truly, if the gingerbread house is an embellishment, it's a rather shaking one. Does it make it moldy? Not if you bake it hard enough. Huh. Comes in like coal at that point, does it not? No, actually, you can twice or even thrice bake things, and they will last a very long time indeed. At that point, with that time, why don't you just use stone? Kane, uh, you would actually be familiar with the idea of twice baking things because that's kind of how you get stuff like hardtack. Very good for sea, uh, for sea journeys or thing times when you're out in the water and not expecting to get back anytime soon. You're pretty sure that you could shingle things. You could shingle root with the things. It's actually the origin of the word biscuit. It actually means twice baked. But then, oh of course, the actual thing... Uh, stuff changed about traditions, but yes, the original term meant that. And it basically meant you bake it once, and then you take it out, and then you bake it again, and it gets really hard. I'm assuming the hag is telling us this. <laughs> I just she doesn't know that. about it. <laughs> Queen means cook. Apparently she had like a teacher who was in the wheelhouse of gingerbread house. <laughs> Sorry, my mind's just a little bit blown. I need like a minute. It's okay. Yeah. Yep. Bye. Queen. Biscuit. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> and also I just can't. Huh. Hmm. Well, if that's a tale being spun, I suppose there's always threads of truth, are there not? 
More often than not. Hmm. Even if it's not uh, your truth or the truth, there is a truth. I suppose I have a bit of an obsession with the V, but a truth is just the truth that someone sees, is it not? Or it's a more encompassing truth than getting bogged down in the details. Hmm. Take, take the spindle. How many little children do you think knew a granny at the edge of the woods who gave them a magic spindle that spun their troubles away in exactly that manner? Even one would be a uh, something of a uncertainty, shall we say. But thinking about it, it takes the elements of other things, true things. A child who is so alone and so put upon, a kindly stranger, a way out. Perhaps a means of vengeance. Uh, your spindle, then. Hmm. Perhaps. You did rather clear away a former problem of my own and let me free. Perhaps you were a combination of my spindle and my old granny. <laughs> Coming from one of yourself, I... <laughs> it's a little joke, don't worry. I'll take the compliment where I can get it. <laughs> you haven't earned it at this point, but uh, learn the right things, and perhaps one day you could come close. Hmm. Hmm. And... Hmm. Just thanks for a sec. Is that the only time something like this has happened to you? Stuck it with is. a difficult way to get out? It is, and I am not hoping to repeat the experience. They check. Go ahead. 24. And yeah, no outright lies. She uh, kind of has this um, this expression on her face, which very much says that she's disgusted at both the situation, at the person who put her in the situation, and maybe just a little bit at herself for ending up in the situation. No. She did not enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And it is definitely the first time it's happened to her? Well, given the expression, you don't think that she's going to let it happen again. So if it this is the second time, then oh boy. Um, yeah, no, this seems to be the first time this has happened to her. All right. Mm, she just nods. <sighs> well, I think for now, that's all we'd ask. Indeed. I... So where where are you heading off to? I suppose that I don't suppose there's a village nearby. It's been rather a long time since I've been in the area. She shakes her head. No, um hmm. very sparse in terms of humanoids, you'll find more beasts and monsters and the like. These barren lands have only gotten more so, I believe, from your time. Shame. I wonder if it'd be easier to just pack up and move. I do hope you'd be keeping in contact, then. Mm, oh, oh, yes. Uh, actually, there's a way to... Uh, one moment. And she reaches into her own mouth. And Alsana goes, yep, there it is. <laughs> oh! And you hear a strange little snap and then a squelching. And she pulls out of her own mouth. A I only doughy... realized what, then I imply, what I was implying after you put the fingers in the mouth. A dully gleaming, almost metallic looking molar tooth, dripping a little bit with a dark, almost black ichor. 
she reaches over and her very long arm unfolds as she reaches across a good distance and then places the tooth in Alsana's hand. Hmm. That'll be an easy way to get in contact. Think of it as a... Have you ever, have you ever heard or used a sending spell? Uh, I believe I have, yes. Just between the two of us. Hmm. And she kind of like turns it over in her hand. Well, I'm very appreciative. Now don't let anybody else have that. I wouldn't dream I of have, it. I only have so many to go around. Even if I didn't have the, um, not the history that I do now with you, I would not be one to let a thing like this go. Excellent. Well, I'll be in touch. You do the same if you'd like. If you have any questions or concerns, if you need help. Or perhaps just a visit in, let's say, a couple centuries. Hmm. Perhaps. Or if I need a little bit more help getting on my feet, and she taps the book uh, against her side. You did rather promise. And I believe I did see you walking on your own two feet just not a few minutes ago. We both know that's not what was meant. I mean, if we're, if we're looking at words on the page. And she gives like a, like a joking grin. And by words on the page, I believe you also promised to keep me safe and defend me from danger. Mm. By all means, I believe you said. She nods. Well, first something would have to pose a danger to one such as yourself. Oh, yes. Um, but you'll understand if I must take some precautions. I'll see how things go. Just make sure you're in the area. She nods. I can... get about. If it, even if it is a bit, um... And she kind of, like, leans back on the broom. Ah, uh, trite. Ah, well, I suppose it's better than nothing. Have you ever considered a barrel? She shakes her head. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the upper body strength to lug that around as easily. Hmm. Shame. Well, we'll be off then. Do come again. And as you head out the door, you hear a little bit of motion behind you, and you hear the mutter retreating into the back room. Now, I wonder if the pestle and mortar are in here somewhere. Well, so just everyone, let's go, let's go. She uh, walks over to the Pegasus, who I assume is over by the water now. Yep, I... Uh He's kind of keeping an eye out on things. He seems a little bit more alert. Uh, his ears actually flick slightly towards you as you come out. Yeah, and just a quick he celestial starts, hello dear. Starts cautiously moving towards you. These are friends, don't worry. Yep, there's a little wicker. He uh, drops his nose briefly into your hand. Looks like around. A very light pat. Yeah. The rest of you see kind of an assessing look. Still a little bit dull around the eyes. He doesn't look healthy. He doesn't look um he doesn't look as uh he doesn't look spunky by any means, let's put it that way. But at the very least a, he's better than that listless, um, unmoving state that he was in when you arrived. Can I also do a quick medicine check on him as they're walking off? All right, go ahead. Um, maybe if there's, she's got nature proficiency too, but maybe if there's some like, she's basically trying to figure out a, like more in exact terms what he might be wrong with him and what he needs. With guidance. <laughs> yeah. Seven. My god. Seven. 
of 36. Yeah. Okay. Um, you have a laundry list of things. Uh, the shoes should come off. The hooves need a little bit of trimming. There needs to be some fresh shoes of a better material. Um, most of the harm seems to have been done by just prolonged exposure to bridle and saddle and cruel treatment. Uh, he needs better nutrients. He needs a slow and steady diet intake. Um, Kane, your, ex your expertise is a lot more on ships than horses. Um, I'm not sure you've interacted with very also, many. whatever it is, it's not a 36. <laughs> yep. Uh, frankly, Alsan has got this covered. Pretty much mm -hmm. anything anybody else could possibly pipe up with, Alsana pretty much just finishes your sentence at the same time as you and carries on further. And then she goes into her bird care idea for the uh, for wings. Ah, shooing as an action and stuff rather than knowledge. Um, I don't believe you've had any blacksmith training, let alone as a farrier. Um... Your knowledge tends more towards the weapons. Oh, you are blacksmithing proficient? Um, hmm. It's still a different area. Go ahead and, um, let's see. Do you have a wisdom check that has proficiency? If so, go ahead and roll that. Fifteen? Ah! Ah! Like, you might have gotten one crash course on shoeing a horse, but, uh, again, it wasn't really your expertise, um, and it's not something you would have practiced. In a pinch, you could probably do it. Just curious for later care. Okay. Um, yeah, Alsana, you're... There is so much, uh, this horse probably has, like, two or three different diseases going on. None of them magical. They're all just from being ill-kept for a long period of time. Um, simple uh, enough to take care of. Uh, there needs to be some bandaging. There needs to be some cleaning. Um, some of those feathers are actually, like, moldy. Um, basically, the horse is going to look really bad for a while, but it can get better. All right. Yep. She'll just do a lesser restoration or two. Um, sorry, you said there's two or three? Let's go with two. Alright. Uh, yeah, then she'll do two of them to uh, deal with the diseases. Yep. We'll say that there were enough symptoms overlapping that you thought, eh, maybe three, but once you put the two lesser restorations in and did another checkup, uh, things were already looking so much better that it's like, okay, no, it was two things that were overlapping in such a way that suggested a third. Alright. Because, yeah, 36, that, yeah, you know exactly everything All right. that's wrong. Oh, she knows the exact okay. breed of Pegasus this is. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Um, but as you're, as you're taking care of the Pegasus and heading down the path, um, as a reminder, when you walked into this place, it was sunset. By this time, the sun has gone down. You are walking in the dark. You all have dark vision, of course. But it is um, it is a situation where uh, your visual range pretty much cuts off. I think all of you at 60, unless somebody has a little bit more. I got 60. Yep. I've got 60. Um, so pretty much 60 feet out, the area around is just black. This is the eve of a new moon. There's nothing but stars in the sky. They're beautiful, but they don't give off a great deal of light. Where we were given a direction that also to memorize for the getting back to the work tray. You were. How, so you know how far is that? Um you know they're camping a good distance away. Um it might be like an hour's walk or so. They were basic. They basically dropped you off and were like, "We're gonna walk until sunset and set up camp." Pretty much. All right. Um, I think it might be worth the trekking on. Probably going to deal with a lot more in the time we're sleeping than in just an hour of travel. At least we can see it coming. Deal with it and move on. 
Yeah, hopefully we aren't surprised by any of those ghosty fuckers again. Yeah. Didn't much enjoy that. Ghosty. Well, the gnolls, the... The... Alright, because there is incorporeal undead about, so don't get the two twisted. They I were so ghosty, they were like, oh. They were made of bones. But they were sneaky. Some of them were, but whatever. We can deal with them if we can see them. That's... I suppose I'll I'll be up at least a little bit, but the distance doesn't exactly change the higher I am. I can get Mori out a little bit. I can get Mori out to look if you want. That might be worth it. Yep. Alley circles. All right. Go ahead and each person roll a perception check. Uh, technically at disadvantage because it does run to dim light at some point. So perception? basically straight for up close and disadvantage for far out. Yes. Alar okay. Would Alars be like neutral because of his goggle? I believe so. Yeah, just to remember, he has one twenty dark vision object, but I will roll normal. Okay. Roll normal for Mori. He's got advantage on perception checks normally and can use his owly ears. Oh, he's guidancing herself. Okay, what the fuck? Oh, crap. John, you're rolling to self. Yeah, that was an accident. 23. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, I still don't know why it's at advantage. I turned off the eyes of the eagle, but whatever. It's uh, one less. No, it's not even. Yeah. It's the first one. It's the no. first one. It's 19. If it was disadvantaged, it'd be 18. But he's advantage because... That's right. Because it cancels itself out, so it'd just be the first roll, so it'd still be a 19. I, yep, I did forget. No problem, no problem. As the eagle, baby! Yep. <laughs> all right. So, with uh, Alfana's perception in particular, and also Alaris up there on the broom with her, um, you guys are able to keep a good eye out and uh, kind of steer the party around various um, probably more like natural hazards uh, like noticing a little shadow in the ground is perhaps a deeper dip in the landscape than what might be first expected um, you also spot the camp a bit further out than anybody else uh, as you see a very faint little wisp of smoke rising from what looks otherwise like a um, just an innocuous dark uh, heap of material that is likely the dome. Alright. Well, keep heading. Yep. After the time, you get up to it. And as you get close enough, uh, the dome actually flickers and drops. Hmm. You see a small fire. You see Roy sitting there. The three, four orcs uh, sitting around it as well. They look over and uh, Vola lifts a hand briefly. It went well. She says in Orcish. In a way, yes. Have you used your spell in order to understand? Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, if... Uh, something, did she use it today? I don't think so. I think you used it earlier today because you were communicating with them. Today yeah, was, was the day where you met. This... Was it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it would have been. Yeah, you're right. This has been a long day for yeah, you guys. Yeah, it's been a long day. Mm-hmm. So yes, you have already used that spell. Um, and she did speak in Orcish. Alright, never mind then. Sorry. Okay. Test test. Test test. Micro background noise. Uh a little bit of fuzzing, but not a lot. Yeah, it's okay. fine. 
He kind of raises his hand like um, the egg is dead and the original hag has taken her place. It seems wiser, a bit more open to deals as opposed to exploitation of a contract. The hag is dead, and yet a hag is taken... There was another hag. Of a sort. They didn't live together. They were competitive. Hmm. Seems a ritual was... performed of variety that I don't understand, and it resulted with a hag who, I believe, gave us information. Well... I'll have to inform the tribe about this. She will have to. to new deals. Is this still yeah. all in Orcish or is it common? Sorry. It is all in Orcish. Alright. That being said, um, he kind of turns to Osana and um, we got what we needed, right? We got as much information as I could think to get out of her. By the way, Volus says in Orcish. And then switches to common. What that? And points at the Pegasus. Ah, this is um, a poorly neglected mount of the previous hag. One... There is a sign of good faith in non-Orkish cultures, and those who ride them are considered uh, blessed. Hmm. And to well. crush one and neglected in such a way is the mark of the cruelty of the previous hag. Which, by the way, did you let her know? Yeah, the old hag said we got a new one that was summoned by some ritual. And... She's probably not going uh, to be staying around long. Yeah. Although, her definition of time seems a bit different than ours, so who knows how long we'll be. Yes, but how often do they get an update on things? Either way, um, I intend to look after this one best I can. That's Pegasus. Roy kind of uh, looks between it and you and says, That's nice, but um, you realize that we're not going to be able to shelter it inside the hut. It's okay to me. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I wouldn't choose this, but the spell has limits. I understand. That's alright. Alsana, how about you, UI and... Possibly Alaris and Cole to sleep outside to help keep. Okay. That could. That'd be fine. I'll watch as well. Yeah. Be nicer. I'll sleep in this armor. Yeah. Can any, uh, any tips, Volda, for uh, resting without the protection of magics? Sleep with one eye open. Somebody always on watch, never falling out of alertness. Very well. Hear Roy say, no, uh, hold on, I am gonna have to, like, virtual recast this. If I do it while nine people are inside of it, they'll be able to come in and out, no problem. If anybody stays outside, they can't pass into it. So, if... I did mess up as a DM last time. Technically, the creatures have to be inside the area of the dome when it is cast in order to have free access. Okay. However, the when I messed it up, it was more of a narrative mess up than anything else. So uh, we just yeah. rolled with it. Okay, we'll kind of be like, well, until the dome comes up, no difference if we're inside or outside. Exactly. I just figured that we should probably... Um, Got it. Yeah. Pull, pull up the short bell and take yeah. a seat by the fire. Yeah, it's not going to work if uh, the Pegasus or if more than nine creatures are inside. Um, also, I'll just, uh, as well as she'll just like, all right, he's going to do a quick spell. Um, just stay here a moment. I'll be right back, I promise. Make a noise if you hear anything uh, dangerous. There's a little puff of air. The Pegasus kind of circles slightly. Roy takes about, I think it's uh, 11 minutes 
Yep, 11 minutes to ritual cast the tiny hut again. You all have free access in and out of it. Um, except for uh, technically um, your familiar's name. Um, oh, the dog? The dog and the owl, technically. Mori and Morty. Yep. Good Mori lord. Jesus. The death of me. Um, technically, only nine creatures in general can be in it, and they do count as creatures, I think, so. I can poof Mori into mm-hmm. pocket, and then Morty can sit outside to watch Morty. Yes. That's work. That works. Okay, uh, just for, like, in reference. Meantime, mm-hmm. In the meantime, can we take whatever food and ingredients is here, and uh, be like, I have a magical cooking pan if anyone's hungry. Is the fire still warm? Fire is still warm, Bola says, but we already ate. Prepare for yourself and your companions. Very well. He'll whip up a simple meal. Try to figure out something he can feed the Pegasus as well. Asana is working with her rations and stuff. Yeah. Yep. One way one way or another. Uh one way or another you manage to get the uh Pegasus fed. Um frankly. You probably don't want to feed him too much all at once because of how long he has gone without food and drink. Uh, his stomach is looking a little bit bloated just from what he ate and drank earlier. Yeah. Also, I was doing like slow pieces of cracker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, with that medicine check, uh, through Olsana, you guys know pretty well how you're going to take care of this creature and nurse it back to health. Now. Oh. Um, after the meal, you guys are getting ready to bed down. Bola comes out of the completed dome and sits down and says, uh, in rough common again, Tomorrow, we take you to Greatest Ruins. Hope you find what you look for. We go on to our tribe. This is still the deal? Except? I believe so. Hope so. Good. Kind of flinches at the same, same sentence. <laughs> well. Rest well, keep watch. Until morning. If, if something does approach, should we uh, join you into the fight, or would you rather peaceful rest? Jaruk could Jaruk needs rest. But rest of us we watch. I guess Kane will take like a stick from his bag, a second stick, some rope, and a bunch of random metal tools because he's blacksmithing tools. Mm-hmm. Tie the rope uh, so that the side with all the metal tools is inside the tent. There's a place to pull on the outside. Mm-hmm. If you hear a bunch of metal clanging, so uh, we're under attack. All right, you're able to do so, specifically because all those objects were inside the dome when it was cast. Because by mm-hmm. God, that spell has some interesting little caveats if you actually read it. Oh yeah. Alsana will probably be um, staying and sleeping with the Pegasus. Okay. Calda would be too, just watching her menagerie with doggy on her stomach. <laughs> then her, she's gonna probably sleep with her armor on. She's sleeping outside of the hut. Wait, dog on your stomach? That dog is like over, like yeah, all of you. <laughs> yeah, he's a size <laughs> large. Of he large. Is he a size large? <laughs> he's a medium beast. I'm small. I'm, I'm small. It doesn't matter. It's, uh-huh. it's not just your stomach, it's your whole everything. Yeah, and? Mm-hmm. He's, he's my blanket. Yeah, alright. Uh-huh. Pro tip. Also, I promise you, that dog is guarding the shit out of Calda. Yeah. He's he's a little dumb, and he can't see right now, but he's just doing his best. How long does he last? Talking about Kane or the dog? He doesn't go away. Oh. He, it's a lot he, like Find Familiar. You don't have to. You don't have to concentrate on it, he's just there. 
Oh. Can you I can make him? a camel? Yeah. I can, but if I dismiss him, then I have to recast it later okay, with that... another spell slot, and I don't want it. Okay, that's just one one. Um, alright. Uh, yep. Alsana will... Basically, although she's got the physical health down, she's trying to help the Pegasus' mental health. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just being very nice, staying with him, checking if he needs anything. Okay. Um, Pegasus cannot talk, but he can understand. <laughs> can she, over the course, see, like notice if it's like purely celestial or if it's? Uh, in terms of language. Yeah, and of what he can understand. Yeah, you could probably try a handful of things. A uh, list of languages again. Uh, do, do common, elvish, druidic, abyssal, celestial. All right. Uh, celestial, common, and elvish, he seems to show understanding. Druidic, not so much. Abyssal, he actually reacts with some fear. She's like, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> she she might that. not even have tried that, honestly, <laughs> if that was on the satchel. Yeah. Okay. Can Kane? Can Kane try Orc? You can try Orcish. There's no response to it. He respond with carrot. Food. Water. Nothing. Song gives Nothing a in Orcish. Song gives right. a glance, and glance over. What are you doing? Talking to the horse? I don't think so. Well, didn't say the horse understood me. Also, it's not a horse, it's a pegasus. Mm. It's a horse with wings. He's more than that. <laughs> Can I pass him? Very important bird horse. I appreciate the sentiment, Balda, but not what I meant. I mean, the beast's a beast, isn't it? Yes, it's not fancy beast. and a good omen, but... Oh, no? It's a celestial. Also, kind of like the owl. Not really a beast, but in the shape of... Not quite. From my understanding, the owl is a... rogue spirit, kind of, taken and jammed into a form of a beast. Physically, it's no different, but in this one, he's... They only come in Celestial. I mean, if they were just a beast to be a horse. And yet you call him just the same. Is that yeah, his dignity? No now I have no understanding. I can use proper terminology. Thank you very much. Celestials, have, the, celestials have some pride, and I think the, his was stepped on. Well, it's like Celestial. Is it like, does it know a god? Did it? Did it come from one? I'm not about to interrogate him. Okay. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah. He's kind of scared. We should let him sleep. He needs... He needs medical and emotional attention right now. And that's it. Does it... Forgive me if this is a foolish question, Mr. I guarantee you it is. Well, I'm gonna ask it anyways. Would holy water be better for it than normal water? I don't think so. Holy water is specifically blessed against banishing and defying fiends and undead. He is neither of those. That's what I mean, though. Wouldn't it be... If it's banishing to undead, would it not be affinitive to celestials? I also want to do a quick arcana check to see how much bullshit Kane's spouting. <laughs> He's I'll asking say... me a genuine question. <laughs> because it relates directly to the physiology of this creature, I want to say that medicine check earlier is enough. Um, holy water is not going to harm the Pegasus, uh, but it's not going to be quote-unquote better for it. It's It'd be basically like... Um, like giving it a somewhat useless vitamin supplement where it's like yeah it's not gonna hurt you but whether it helps you or not is a little up in the air yep. but he doesn't have anything withering or dying he's not cursed by a fiend or anything of the sort so he would do little all other than waste the money we spent on that to deal with the undead we're probably about to all deal right with. all right Take care of the Pegasus yourself. Paul, just step you on your toes. You're gonna you knew it was a stupid question when you asked it. Yes. I'm 
trying to help. I'd appreciate if you didn't immediately bite my face off for it. It's a curiosity. We're trying to learn. We've never seen a Pegasus before. You say you want me to get smarter? I'm asking questions to learn. There's just there's kind of like a condescending look I, I, out of the side of the eye and just turns back to the Pegasus. Okay, just says, eh. Do you want to take first watch while the Pegasus is still awake, Alsana? I think he's drifting off as it is, but yes, I will take first. Alright. If you want to wake me up for the early morning watch, let me know. You'll know. I'll do middle, if it's alright. Just so no one's woken up by any unsavory means, just in case. And then Kane get the morning. Kane will sleep in his armor. Okay. As we'll call them. Mm -hmm. Yep. I believe with heavy armor, it pretty much means that you don't remove any exhaustion from the long rest. Um, I think there's one other effect. You gained half the uh, hit dice you would have. Okay. So if you lost any hit dice the previous day, instead of regaining half your total hit dice, you regain one quarter if you're sleeping in heavy armor. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't believe anybody had any exhaustion, though, so that should be fine. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, you keep watch, and surprisingly, the night passes without incident. Though, Alsana, you do dream of voices just on the edge of your hearing. Just gonna hug the, the walking angel horse. <laughs> Extra tight with that. Yep. And the morning dawns early. Right. You get up the uh, party of orcs already risen outside of the dome. Um, getting their last things together. They don't seem to be stopping for any kind of hot breakfast. They are chewing on various dried rations. Is there a long rest in? Yep, you do have a long rest. Perfect. Vola uh, comes over just as the dome begins to fall. Um, and you see Roy kind of uh, finishing packing up a few last things. She says, Horse, with you? With mm. us? Where? I intend to keep watch over it in the long run, if that's what you mean. Yes. But for where we're going, would you be willing to take care with it we'll watch it would be very appreciated he is rather skittish is there there isn't one of you better with animals than the other is there hmm as uh, Vola looks around the group let's go ahead and take a look at some numbers real quick uh, just to make sure because I don't think any of nope um he's got that they would have roughly that it's pretty neck and neck so let's go ahead and roll 1d4 or um yeah interestingly enough she actually points at jaruk the orc that uh, you cast spare the dying on the previous day and saved the life of she calls over Jaruk and rattles something off in Orcish uh, for Kane's benefit. It's pretty much, uh, pretty much, you're better at taking care of these beasts. You he'll, keep an eye on. He'll, he'll bring up. Apparently, it's not a beast. A celestial. Vola looks over and then looks back. Shrugs. Not Vola a beast. Raven. Is an omen of good. It is an omen of good luck. Take care of it well. And Jaruk comes over and 
surprisingly gently for his burly form, kind of uh, cups the Pegasus's uh, snout, lets him sniff, and then just starts to kind of stroke and massage right around the, the uh, right around the mouth and up and down the nose. Uh, is it just a uh, lady who knows common, or is it most of them? I don't quite remember. Hmm. I believe that Vola has been the one doing most, if not all, communication. Uh, let me double check the other sheet. Actually, the others seem to have some rudimentary grasp on common as well, though Vola is the only one who can speak it to any measure of um, any kind of fluency. Yep. And just, um, if I could borrow you for just a minute, um, I'm going to give an explanation of what he needs. He's still recovering. Um, if you could just uh, round out any things that might be a bit more um, wordy and complicated in common. Vola looks between the two of you and nods and says, speak. She rattles off the cacophony of medical stuff. Basic care of yep. a very injured, malnourished Pegasus. Yep. Um, they kind of nod along. Vola asks you to clarify one or two things, and at the end of it, uh, Jaruk looks a little bit dazed, but resolute. Uh, Vola looks at you and says, You may owe us. She looks over. Well, I don't know how much weight you put in uh, patching him to get patching him back together, and kind of like uh, points to Jaruk. Hmm. You may not owe us as much. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. Um, out of character too. Uh, actually, um, do you deal in gold much in the way? I'm not sure how much you've need for it. Yeah, she shrugs, kind of shakes her head slightly. We trade little. Small villages, not much gold. Not much use. Trade pelts. Food. Useful things. Metal. Tools. She nods. And goes, um, uh, how are the beasts you face in these lands? How do they deal with poisons? Eh. If a beast of bones, no poison. Others, mm, we tend not to use it much. Mm. But, if flesh should be hurt by them? Oh. In that case, and she will hand two vials of the green dragon poison over. Ah. Bola looks at them. When she gets an explanation of what they are, she nods slightly. Could be useful. If a dragon's breath cannot melt through the flesh of some, then I'm not sure what could. Very well. We watch your creature. And the other. Less care is needed to be taken with him. <laughs> We shall see. But if you live your quest will tell you where to find us and you collect creature. If not live in one month, if not return, we set free. Um, in which case um, she'll go and give a quick talk to uh, the Pegasus once more. Okay. It's like, alright, now if, I, if I'm unable to return, I'll promise I'll do everything I can. But should the worst come, there's a place that would gladly take you. And she, uh, first she'll check to see, like, does this Pegasus know, like, directions or places in this country at all? It's a little hard to communicate. You might be able to get a yes-no system going. All right. Basically, ask like, does he know the um, uh, uh, Soren Woods? 
You get a no. Shake of the head. Could she give basic directions, almost? Hmm. Very basic ones. Yes. Um. Like, uh, fly this many, this long, with the rising sun on this side, the setting sun on the other side. Um. See a forest, see towns around it. You're able to describe some of the topography. So, yes, you would be able to at least impart some of that. And the other, she'll impart um, the. Um, where she suspects the encampment for uh, the druids in Greenwater would be. Okay. A little bit more complicated, given that you're trying to pinpoint a place inside a forest, and forests are a little hard to navigate from an air. Uh, bird's eye view with the canopy um, but you're able to more or less at least in part in this other forest there are people who are good yep. Yep. and like you yep. and then she will give a quick um, kind of like a write down on a paper um, okay. basically uh, basically a little note that says um, uh this is a very good boy. You should take care of him. Uh, if you should happen across him, try to uh, get in contact with Alsana at Threshold. Mm -hmm. um, if if you are one who's already familiar with me, please make sure he's okay. I promise I'll pay you back. Okay. And then just kind of do that and just carefully, if she'll let him do a kind of a leather strap kind of around the neck. Alright. I'd say you're able to fashion a like little leather pouch or something similar to put the note inside of. Yep. And she'll just put a few beads on it. Okay. Absolutely. Alright. Give him a pat. One last hug. Yep. Uh, he's not parting from you just yet. You are walking together for a while. Okay, sorry. Mild, yeah, yeah, good but, one. Um, at least long enough for the orc party to kind of put you on the path mm -hmm. that they know of. Assume the whole medical tirade then happens kind of as they're going. Okay. Kane, in the meantime, is discussing with full of that. And work it just uh what kinds of deals they made with the hag beforehand if they did make any like what stories were about her mostly they were kind of a um hey you keep to yourself we keep to ourself understanding uh occasionally it was all right we will take care of this problem maybe some gnolls are getting too close to your territory and in exchange, you will give us um, fairly often like potions, uh, healing tonics, herb craft, things like that. Um, occasionally, there would be a request for a charm of some kind, or even a curse to put on enemies. Um, they didn't deal with her very often, and what deals were made were often made by some of the higher-ranking members of the tribe, and very secretive. Uh, the most they have is rumors, uh, things that were assumed to be, or certainly seemed to be, this case. Okay, so kind of follow up with, like, and, uh, Vola, but what rank do you technically hold in the tribe? Vola, uh, smiles and says, I am blade of I am a blade of Ilnaval. Kevin just kind of whistle like, "Oh wow, okay." Yeah. Uh, fairly decently ranked, um, not the highest, but something of a a commander of squadrons in battles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's definitely one of the more powerful fighters. Glad to be in your care then. I would yeah. like to face you in a, hmm, in a not Sparring unfriendly match. spar. 
imagine there's like some orcish wood word for like blood spar. Probably. There is yeah. a very distinct phrase which means bigger than a spar, but not a true fight or grudge match. A fight for enjoyment. Exhibition. But without but without heat. Fun to the edge of your life. Exhibition match. <laughs> Bungee sparring. <laughs> Many of those things all at once. Yes. Okay, I'll try to be like, before we part. Uh, actually, I was like, hold on. Calda? Yeah? If I get in a sparring match with Ola, will you patch me up after? Mm -hmm. Alright, before it. we part, uh, I would be happy. Alright. Um, she does say. It may be unwise in the middle of the plains. When you are done, return to our tribe. I'll give you directions. I'll meet you then. Does, uh... Does your tribe ever go west? Across the Moormarsh? Or to the Moormarsh? Not often. I'll go ahead and switch everybody to the main map so I can kind of uh, draw around on it. She says, no, not often. We tend to stay towards the center and the east. Well, if you ever find cause to expand out west, I am of the Moormarsh, and you would have a welcome home and a place of peace and healing if ever needed. Ha! It would be dull so quickly. Yes, but I can cook quite a meal while you are stuck there. But who knows? Do you ever wrestle a crocodile? I do not believe I have. Uh, Barehanded makes for quite well, a fight. Well, should we ever gain passage across those lands, I will look in on it. If you ever like, if you go north enough to be on the, uh... Is it called the Umbar Lake? What's the body of water called? Uh... The Maramore? The Maramore. Alright. If you ever go to the Maramore, to the Swift River, I, uh, I do ferries, I do boating. I can give you a uh, passage. Though you will be put to work on my ship. We will consider it. Alright. And lacking that, if you ever want some Fresh steel. Uh, happy to provide. I have quite the supply. Similarly, you are welcome in our tribe. I will bring great gifts. Your strength would be gift enough. But a good axe would be twice as good. What worth is an axe without the arms to swing it? A bargaining chip for those who can. You speak like a merchant, and she just starts walking <laughs> off. He's, he kind of just grins like, you can blame the, uh, the man whore for that one. She yeah. leads you further into the plains. Somewhat southward, for about a day. As I go ahead and get my no snapping ruler so I can measure things out. It is a very long walk. Um, through uh, winding hills, ridges, flat stretches of land. The occasional body of water trickling through the plains, irrigating it. You pass a great many ruins shattered rem remnants of perhaps once mighty cities, villages, towns. Nothing but reminders now. All but lost to time. Could Alsana give like quick checks in, maybe like a zip in on the broom? Like some of those ruins, see if there's anything on the inside. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll a d20. Mm. 
seven. For the most part, they are just the shells of buildings. Sometimes they're little more than an outline of what was once a foundation set in the earth. Uh, but once when you zip into a place that still has, you know, the majority of three and a half walls left, um, you actually startle a small colony of bats, and they fly out screeching and screaming into your face. No, I'm sorry, come back, I just want to be friends. Uh, you do have to return to the group with somewhat must hair due to all the wings and little claws scratching and there's a little like chick down the cheek. Um, but nothing really of interest or fun otherwise. You occasionally hear off in the distance the yipping calls of a hyena, giant or otherwise, but don't encounter any at least thus far. How windy is it, out of curiosity? Ah, uh, let me see. Did I write down? Not very. All right, so it's not that kind of howling. No, doesn't seem so. At least not today. I might just give a quick uh, ask to uh, Vola, and then just like, so this is called the Howling Plains, is. Is it off wind season, or is that just a not a connection there is? Volo kind of smiles at you, and it's a, not a reassuring smile. And she says, The dead sing, do they not? I was wondering if it was just multiple meanings, is all. Hmm. She shrugs and keeps walking. You rest for the night, with the same arrangement of sleeping inside and outside the dome. The next day, another bright and early dawn, and they begin to cut slightly westward, about half a day or so before stopping on the edge of um, a smaller, almost tributary river running through. Unnamed as far as any of you know. Unnamed as far as the orcs seem to be concerned. And they point towards it, and they say, and Vola says, This. Follow downstream. And she points roughly west-southwest. It leads to biggest ruins I have ever seen. Stick with it. May you find what you search for. Our camp is, and she points the almost the opposite direction, more northeast. A day and a half, perhaps a bit further. Can you we will just do see this us to get like a fairly accurate estimate of where it is. Yep. I. Uh, yep. You're able to pretty well figure out, yep, that way a little bit, that way another bit. Um, and she says, uh, Liv, by next new moon, come and retrieve this. And she pats very gently the uh, pegasus on the plank. It's been sticking very close to you all, Sana, this entire journey. Can Cain have before they went to bed the previous night. Mm -hmm. Pulled a horse brush out of the bag of holding. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your d20. Watch it be a one and he just pulls out like hair. Horse hair. Eight. I'm pretty sure that's fairly moderate. Let me just go ahead and check my uh, gauges. Um, you get the standard of the item. It's you get a mundane, boring, ordinary horse brush. Nothing special, but it'll do the job. Well, I hope this doesn't uh, offend the pride of the Celestial, but I'm sure getting the dirt out of the coat will be thanks enough. Jane looks over. I was doing some with my fingers as it was. Okay, I'll take it back if you'd like. 
and looks over. Are you offering it or what? Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna use it. Good. I don't think. Uh, uh, I figured. I think he. I think he's not keen on new people pulling on his hair. Yeah, I notes. wasn't gonna try it. I've seen what a horse's teeth can. I can't imagine what a celestial horse's teeth can. Here, I'll just toss it to her. Catch it, can Give him like an odd look and just turn back. And just... All right, so this is probably going to hurt a bit, but my goodness, you need it. All right. I'll say the previous night you were able to give the Pegasus at least some brushing, though perhaps it was a little bit delicately done in order to avoid some of the hurts. Um, he flinched a lot as you rushed too close to certain places. Uh, but it's a start. Yeah, just just like the worst of it. She's trying to mm -hmm. make do what she can do. I mean, a bit mad it is okay, but like... The, gr the grosser bits are just gotta go. Yep. But uh, the next morning, you are pointed in a direction and told that's the way you'd like you'd want to head down the river and then across it. Are so, we, are we ready to go? I think as will ever be. Yep. Yeah. One second then. She'll just kind of give a proper hug. The Pegasus kind of curls its head down across your back and almost seems to hug back. Aww. You're killing me here. You're playing mm. too much Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to hit on the horse heartstrings. I was gonna go to Shadow of the Colossus, like, no, please. Yep, I'll, just, I'll be right back for you. Let's, if, uh, or at least I'll do my very best to, alright? Yep, there is a faint little wicker from the horse. He stands and watches as you move away with Jaruk's hand resting on his shoulder, just above the wing joint. The wings are already no longer trailing on the ground. They're not fur fully and firmly tucked up, but they're actually carried upwards a little bit now. Actually, can Kate? Mm -hmm. Also, just as a, as a bit of a thank you, I think she has... She's going to give a small bit of honeycomb to Jaruk as another thank you. He looks a little bit awkward taking it, but he accepts and kind of nods and grunts. Kane, before they leave, roll some kind of history to know where gift giving upon leaving sits in the whole orcish culture. Um, go ahead. history roll, but I hope he's got a decent DC. Mm. You can't really remember. Um, you didn't witness um, people leaving the tribe the brief time that you were part of it. Uh, you don't know if in some weird way when your mom left you with Roy, it was like considered a gift giving in some way. Uh, and you, of course, you didn't leave the tribe on such terms that you would have asked beforehand, so you're not sure. Okay. He'll walk up to Vor then and say, uh, or is that not Vor? Um, Vor? I don't know. Vola? Vola. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, will you accept a, a parting gift for each of your members for me? She says, there is no need, but if you insist, then we will not refuse. He'll pull out uh, from the bag one rock feather for each of them and give the beak to uh, Vola. Hmm. I hope, uh, I hope uh, the blessing of a 
The bird whose strength rivals that of the greatest of creatures. Well, fare thee well. There is greater honor in it if we had felled the beast ourselves, but we'll carry these tokens and remember you for it. Be strong. My swift legs carry you. With that, they give their last farewells. Roy kind of stands awkwardly on the edge of everything, watching and waiting, but not saying anything directly. Also, I'll kind of catch his glance and then just kind of stare at him for a bit. See what he does. There is a little cough. <laughs> she kind of like crosses her arms and like tilts yeah. her head like, well. <laughs> he edges over and says, well, um, hope you're going to find what you're looking for. Spend all last night thinking that one up. Eh, I've never been good at goodbyes. Oh, I don't think you know how. <laughs> oh, I don't think you could have planned that sentence better. Let me see. Sana's having a field day with that one. Mm -hmm. Well then, if we do die, um. Maybe you can find the funeral. Yeah. We'll do our best not to, though. I'd honestly prefer that. Not least because I'm half afraid that if you did, you'd for some reason come back and haunt me. For some reason, he says. For some reason. For some reason. She tells like. Well, I mean, if anyone, it'd more likely be me, but I think we'll be coming back to haunt you regardless. <sighs> well, either way, don't die, um, and uh, thanks for taking care of that, uh, the, uh, the glad problem. Do, do what problem, sorry? The Gladys problem. Shunan's like, oh, so you did know her. We established that. <laughs> yeah, you were holding out earlier, though. Um, she requested your eyeballs, by the way. I, I'm sorry, what? Yes, um, and she you also requested die. that uh, to return something you had stolen from her. Huh. Well, hags do and say crazy things sometimes. <laughs> uh, I know you're full of shit. What did you take? Absolutely nothing, except for my dignity. Uh, no little gaming set of the sort. Do you think I'm the gaming type? I think you're the take what you want, take what you want because you can type. Alsana, I am wounded, truly. Will be soon. <laughs> you will. No, Sorry, you're not right. Wait, now. You will. wait, did somebody say something? I, I don't know, but I can this feel is out this. Of character. Like, yeah, I don't know, but I can feel this like overbearing something from over there. Whatever it is, it's really stupid. Um, oh, wow. I just imagine it's, it's the equivalent of like you look over to an anime character and there's like this like black and purple like ink covering around them. It's just like, oh, look, he's having a good time. She's like, I don't ruin you, I'm simply pointing out the stab wound that's been there for years. Yes. Well, regardless, I appreciate not losing eyes to a hag, though uh, I do wonder how she knew I was there. Well, if you're so appreciative, then why don't you tell me what you took? I told you, my dignity. <laughs> you think after all this... You have both just... Remember what I said about honesty? <sighs> Never once have you ever said you had no idea what she was talking about. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh. He sighs, kind of looks back and forth a little bit. Um, he reaches into the pack, digs around, and pulls out a set of polished bone dice. Small, six sides each. There's silver inlay, uh, marking out the numbers on each side. Kind of rolls them around in his palm slightly. Tosses them up and down and catches them. These are little something she called Fate's Bones. Mm. Curls them away and puts them back. Magical, are they? Somewhat. They can win any gamble. And, uh... Well, I've already... He showed already... these dice before, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He showed all Sana these dice before. Yeah. And uh, I already did it this morning, but once a day I can roll them and get a little insight into how certain things yes, might go. Yes, explained it before. So... I didn't... I didn't explain that part. I swear you did. Out of character, I swear he did. I, maybe he did. I might be forgetting that. Yep. Yeah. And she'll just go, hmm, so I already knew about them. How about that? Oh, so much for putting the pieces together. <laughs> Oh, then you must be that much more appreciative that, given my understanding of you, that I didn't take up the eyes off her. She was very convincing. She kind of like lightly taps the side of his head right beside his eyes. There's a little uneasy smile, like, uh, <laughs> you're funny. Good one. You're definitely funny. Mm. Going to remove. Coming from the bard. I mean, they can't all be funny, can they? Well, well. if that's it, then... Mm. She kind of like taps, like, taps a finger to her chin. Mm. No, I still want to... Um... And It's not to the extent of others, but there's a bit of wanting to get back I'd like to do, so... And she gives him a hug. Let's... He seems to have tensed up a little bit just as you moved, and then there's a hook and just shock. Yep. Intense uncomfortableness will do for now. He relaxes a little. Oh, for a second I thought you were going to stab me. There's like a tap of a nail in the back. <laughs> Alright. And she well. kind of, like, shoves him off. <sighs> Got you there for a second, didn't I? Only for a second. <laughs> well, um, I should probably be going. Looks like they're ready to head out, and I'd rather not stick around and probably be murdered by your brother. Oh, I just thought, can I use a, can I use my mulligan this game? Okay. What when she like was to... going for the hug, could she have tried to swipe the dice? Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, go ahead and roll sleight of hand. All right. Yep. She's not great at this by any means, but. Nah. Uh, you're not quite able to find the pouch where he hid them. Mm -hmm. It's just in an awkward place, and you give up pretty quickly. Yep. All right. Oh, that would have been funny. Oh, well. Yep. yep. It would have been. Would have been. And, yep, she'll give a wave and head off. Okay. Must the party split? Half of them turn back towards the east. Yes. Half of them, you guys, turn towards the west. Mm -hmm. The sun is high in the sky over you. Neither one is walking into the sunlight, though eventually as the day wanes on, you'll find yourselves heading more or less in that direction. Conrad is typing. 
Oh, I'll wait for a moment. Here. Relax breath for the first time in days. Yep. As Roy is out. Roy has left the party. Yay. Finally. Mm -hmm. I genuinely think if, if there was one more day of having to play with him as a party member, Kane would have fucking killed him. <laughs> Just cold-blooded murder. I'm sure you said that three yeah. days ago. It's not even cold-blooded at this point. Warm-blooded yeah. murder. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's some heated murder. That's, that's like some, some boiling boiling murder. murder. <laughs> yeah. Steaming murder. Lukewarm murder. Hot steaming murder. Moid in the morning. Akin to plasma. Oh, Yikes. <laughs> so plasma plasma? No, akin to plasma. But blood plasma or sun plasma. Simply Anyways. Yes. Yeah, it's just moida. Anyways. Started. Yes. You guys continue downriver. You have various options to cross it as you walk along. Um, there's a place where it grows somewhat wider, more shallow. A bit of a natural ford. Um, there's a place where it's a bit narrower and happens to be crossed by like a jumbled up a pile of debris, something of a dam, perhaps built by creatures like beavers or similar things, uh, perhaps just a natural tangle of logs and twigs and sticks that is built up over time and hasn't yet been washed away by the water. Um, otherwise, you can stay on the other bank, but you're beginning to see more ruins, more footprints of buildings. Both sides of the river, though the bulk of them seems to be on the opposite bank. You're seeing more collapsed uh, columns. Some things are overgrown with shrubs and moss, trees climbing out of uh, broken remains of walls. Nature has all but swallowed the remnants of that civilization, but you're still seeing the hints of it. Whatever culture this was, it seems to have favored a light-colored stone, perhaps native to the area. There are just bits and pieces scattered about. Nothing as overt as statuary or reliefs. Um, you don't see anything towering on the horizon. What you do see is, again, just footprints here and there. Occasionally, a bit of a plinth that has somehow withstood time. Sometimes even the majority of a couple of walls. Also, I'll give, I'll give another quick check-in to like a building she might see it's more cohesive. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Careful for bats this time. <laughs> <laughs> You find shrubs, you find grass. There is no floor to speak of. It has completely been swallowed up by the shifting of dirt, earth, seeds, animals. There's maybe a little, like, a little tunnel that might be a mouse den in a corner, but otherwise it's barren. She'll be like, just take like a tiny little bit out of her rations and just flick it over towards the mouse hole. <laughs> Nothing responds, but you leave the ration there thinking, yeah, something will have a nice snack. Yep. So, you guys walk for probably another couple of hours, mid-afternoon or so. Uh, it is the 17th day of the month. Do you guys cross the river, or do you stay on the other bank um, and wait for another opportunity? Which way is the river flowing? It is flowing um, roughly southwest. Occasionally, it'll curve one way or another and kind of twist its way between hills. Mm. There's a fair number of trees here and there as well. Uh, it's not a forest by any stretch, but... Uh, it's a little bit more wooded than some areas of the plains that you've seen. 
I mean, hey, this is exactly how the marsh used to be. So he's like, uh, anyone have any qualms with me, uh, floating down? Not really. He'll take out the yeah, he'll take out the canoe, he'll pull out the ten-foot pole that he used inside the dungeon, he'll start punting along like he's used to. <laughs> Singing just a quiet tune to himself. Alright. You do start to travel significantly quicker than those walking on the bank, except for Elsana, who would be able to keep up uh, with one passenger. Is the canoe big enough for a second person? You know what? Probably. Probably at least a call look I'm a tiny yeah, person. To... Yeah. Yeah, hey, look up to Elsana and just be like, and the dog? I'll say you're able to get Calda and the dog in the canoe. Alright, he goes, Alaris, you want to fly? Calda, float with me? Sure. That's fine. Calda, do you know how to swim? Yeah, I I grew up on an island. Of course I know how to swim. Do you know how to swim in all that metal? Okay, speaking as someone whose parents are from the Caribbean and most of my family doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> See, I can't... I don't have a perspective of how difficult or easy it is to know how to swim because I can't... <laughs> That'd be fair. So I don't know. Calda would know how to swim, hard. but in armor, I don't know how much their resistance is. I don't know. It's a little bit more weight. Um... <sighs> but she has such a strength score, so I think she'd be fine. Yeah. Calda, yeah. I'd say that you might be able to struggle your way, but oh, it would be difficult. It it would probably take some athletics checks just to have that half speed movement in the water. All right. The fact that she can do it is a testament to her strength mm -hmm. score. Athletics yeah. checks are possible because of that strength score. Uh, score, yeah. but just anybody average in, would have trouble. Yes. If you fall in, swim sideways. If you can. Get to the shore, do it. If not, I'll jump in and get you in. Because he's wearing his medium armor right now, not his heavy armor. If I fall in, I can probably just teleport somewhere. Oh. I mean, that's also an option, but... But if all else fail, uh, swimming sideways. Would Kane have, like, a life preserver? He did this for <laughs> a living for years. <sighs> not on you. Because I think you requested canoe, not canoe and life preserver from the bag, right? Yep, you don't even have an oar for the canoe, to be honest. And uh, to be frank, I don't think a life preserver is going to do a whole lot against heavy metal armor. I am not that tiny. Okay, just a thought, because again, he did this for years, so. Yeah. You navigate your way down the river. Uh, occasionally you have to kind of steer the canoe around various rocks or boulders that uh, stick up from the river uh, where it gets a little more shallow or the rocks are that big. Um, there's the occasional sandbar to avoid a bit of debris. Uh, but you're able to navigate your way with your skill and expertise while Alsana and Alaris fly overhead. The usual 10 to 20 feet up, I'm assuming? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Alright, you're able to keep pace. Alara's seeing everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, go ahead and let's have Alaris and Alsana specifically roll perception. Uh, uh, Kane and Calder, probably you have your perception on the river itself yep. in order to avoid any debris or trouble in the water. That deception. And yep. just while they're going along, he says, it, I find it's peaceful. Ugh. Sing while we float, so. Any halfling songs you want to teach me? Uh, Calda? I can teach you through some sea chapters, <coughs> some of them in halfling, some of them are common. I think all of them should be not too loud. Yes. Uh, we'll just fly higher. Tomorrow. It's not me I care about hearing. Oh, um, yeah. Might I remind you where we are? I forgot Hags ain't children of summer. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be a warble at this. Yep. That's a little warble of halfling song. Uh, drifts up. And the occasional chime of Cain joining in uh, as he learns, like, the chorus lines, the repeated lines. Uh, Cain, go ahead and, let's see. Let's call this 
let's call this wisdom just for mimicry. It's not so much intelligence as understanding as you're trying to copy sounds. So just a wisdom check. Yeah. And all, all, more, my, all my mental stats are exactly the same, so don't worry about it. You're actually following along pretty well. Um, occasionally he mispronounces a word, a word called in. And he doesn't really know what he's singing. Uh, but for all its slight garbledness, just, he just seems to make be mimicking mimic. you pretty well. Just call to make him mimic some terrible phrases. Call to, uh, my brain immediately went to drunken sailor of put him in uh, the bed with the captain's dog. <laughs> like Do you that him? verse. Do you teach him that verse? Oh yeah. I personally don't like that Z shanty, but for the hell of it. That verse. Okay. Oh, this and is a uh, very specific type of chaos that I'm super into. Yep. Nicole has like the cheekiest smile on her face. I'll to take some medicinal herbs for a light migraine resulting. <laughs> I have a charisma score, you whore! It's a sea shanty. <laughs> sea shanties are great. Yes. She's a goth. Skill bows in the face yeah. of taste. We're gonna have a post session conversation about gothists and sea shanties real quick. But goth. <laughs> That's actually a very fair point. Moving Aside on. the point. Ooh. Ah, uh, you round a bend in the river. Mm, that's true. Oh, round a bend in the river. Off on the shore that seems to have more of the buildings, bigger buildings. Um, you see a squared structure. Um, Alsana and Alara see it far better from their vantage point in the air. Yeah. Uh, something of a platform with what looks like the remains of a uh, rounded stone in the center. Um, not spherical, but flat and circular. There are crumbled, but still relatively intact stone steps leading up to that platform on each side. So round but flat, like an igloo's foundation? Not quite. Um, more like a... Do you know do you know a millstone? Okay, kinda, uh, yeah. Without any hole in the center, just a circular stone that's uh flat on the top and probably the bottom from the way it's sitting on this flat platform, kinda like a pancake. Alright. Uh probably about ten feet across. Um basically it's big and it looks like it was specifically worked into that shape. There are pillars scattered on the ground. You see the footprints of a few more buildings on each side. Um, the remnants of what might once have been a stone road uh, stretching from each side of this... Uh, it's not quite a building. Structure. This, this platform. Um, though they are mostly overgrown and very quickly disappear into underbrush. As you notice this, Alsana, you barely notice a flicker of movement. Your perception just mm. enough to catch on the motion of something in the brush in the trees. Hello to and you hear you yep. hear a creak and then a sudden snap and hiss. As a small volley of arrows flies out of the brush towards both broom and canoe. Transform. And you hear, crossbow. hold on, hold on, hold on. You hear the yelps and yips and laughs as a number of gnolls and hyenas pop out of the brush. Some start to charge towards the river, others draw back arrows again. We're going to go ahead and leave it off there, and we're going to pick up initiative and combat next time, because it's getting late. So, does Alphonse get a benefit from having seen that, or...? Um, you basically got the benefit of there's going to be no surprise round as you alert everybody. Alright. Yes. So, whenever we pick up, initiative is going to be rolled, and you take your actions on your turns. Okay. Nobody, okay. Uh, nobody gets to have surprise round, nobody gets to set up anything beforehand just for, like, fairness sake. Alright, alright. Okay. Then immediately lose an action. 
Unfortunately. Pirate combat, pirate combat, pirate combat, pirate combat. <laughs> have you got a canoe oh. token ready? I do not have a canoe token ready. I'm just going to have to find one, aren't I? So, until next time, until we'll next handle time. this then. Yep. Goodbye.